When you hear the words world peace, what comes to your mind? Happiness, freedom, harmonic unity. Now, I want you to think about your favorite movie. And also, why is it your favorite movie? It's kind of tough, right? I mean, you have to pick through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of movies just to choose the one that excites your personality the most. Like, maybe if you're an 80s kid, boom, The Breakfast Club. Maybe if you're a comic book fanatic, boom, The Dark Knight. Maybe if you have it just a little bit of an edgy side, boom, Pulp Fiction. Maybe if you have a really bad taste, boom, Transformers. But I also want you to think about the global impact of your favorite movie. How does it make people set aside their own differences for a more peaceful cause? All of our favorite movies have a way of recording history and spreading ideas among the world. It kind of makes you think that achieving world peace isn't as insurmountable as we've always believed. For centuries and centuries, humans have not been able to fully understand the ideas and differences of other cultures apart from our own early. This all changed when Edison had a bright idea. Sorry, Dad, but Edison invented the first ever motion picture camera. People can now express their ideologies and tell stories like we never could have before. If the average American has a life expectancy of about 80 years, and you'll watch about three to four movies per week, depending on how lonely you are, you'll watch almost 13,000 movies in your lifetime. But for an avid movie lover like me, however, the number could easily be doubled. Name any movie, good or bad, I've most likely seen it. But from the vast majority of the movies that I've seen, I've learned that they're a fantastic learning tool. As a 16-year-old white kid growing up in the South, exploring movies from all over the world has given, me, has given me an opportunity to see different perspectives, cultures, and ideologies outside of America. My goal today is to show you how we can ultimately achieve world peace through the way of creating movies, and the way that regions around the world express their ideologies and show specific characteristics of their own culture for the sole purpose of an understanding. I'm going to show you some of these examples of movies first, but then I'll get back to the concept of all these. I'm going to start in India, where the cinematic style is much different than what we have in America. Indian cinema is commonly referred to as Bollywood, in which the movies have a very romantic essence to them. They also tend to break out into sudden musical numbers, each one lasts for about five minutes, which adds to the three hour long duration of the movie. But I'm going to talk about one of the most popular Bollywood movies, Three Idiots. It's about these three college kids who relentlessly seek creativity in their university for engineering, but the only problem is the teachers are terrible, and they drive many of the students to depression because of how strict their methods of teaching are. But the whole movie revolves around these three idiots trying to navigate the world of success. Bollywood movies like this typically embody the fundamental characteristics of Indian culture, like the music, the social structure, and the spiritual beliefs. But more importantly, they inspire change and express the art of breaking unfitting tradition with the message of not holding su such high standards and expectations for others. It's the essence of exactly what society learns from each other, completely without using violence, but with just an exchange of thought between two different sides. Moving northeast to China, we have a very similar pattern in movies. Asian martial arts are built into American pop culture. So we can already see some of these connections, like if you're a Kill Bill fan, or a Wu-Tang Clan fan, or a Kung Fu Panda fan like me, you're going to want to take a look at this movie. It's the 36th Chamber of It's set during it's set sometime between the 17th and the 20th century in the Manchu oppression in China. Sante, or the main character, his community is demolished by the Manchu dynasty. So he realizes that he's had enough, and he goes to the Shaolin Temple, passes through the 35 stages of training, which would make him a true Shaolin, or as they call it, the Master Killer. This training montage is honestly better than the one in Rocky, but the lesson of the movie is learning self betterment and having or so learning self betterment and peace rather than being so wrapped up in vengeance and anger. You really gotta appreciate the complexity of the ideas shown in this particular culture. Sante using or Sante using Kung Fu ties in with spiritual development and having respect for different ideologies, which is essential in the collective of every world peace. It kind of relates to how a form of physical expression can transform our behaviors 
into something that we can seriously build up. Moving further east to Japan, Japan gave birth to the popular anime craze in the early 20th century as a form of propaganda during World War II. Everybody has seen some anime movie or TV show, right? Like Naruto, Dragon Ball, or Pokemon. I personally watched all episodes of Attack on Titan last summer. It's a very good show, by the way. But anime brings us together so that we can really appreciate what we actually are as a world, but it's also a way to teach children across the globe great values. The anime that really stands out to me the most, though, is a movie called The Grave of the Fireflies. A quick disclaimer, this movie is extremely sad and depressing. I could probably be crying by the end of it. But it's about a Japanese teenager in the midst of World War II who assumes the responsibility of protecting his little sister throughout the events of the American firebombings on Japanese land. The siblings really rely on each other for survival as they suffer through severe starvation and family problems. This movie doesn't exactly have a specific theme, which is beautiful, because it shows exactly how people were and what they did to keep a living despite the massive number of casualties in that time. This movie was made in the 80s, so we can generalize here and say that the memories of World War II were still relatively fresh within everybody's mind. The creators, the, the creators of this film are trying to provide, provide an overall understanding of different perspectives during the war. So instead of looking at the nation of Japan as an enemy from the war, she considered that the people who were fighting thought they were fighting for as good as or used as anyone else would. Capturing this in such a powerful work of art is essential in, in preventing such a catastrophe in the future. This is a lesson that we can teach our children, but it's also a lesson that everybody can learn from. Moving to Europe, the James Bond franchise has been alive and well for six decades and throughout 26 movies. It's about this British secret intelligence agent, or Agent 007, who fights gangsters and criminals with his cool gadgets and my dream vehicle, the Aston Martin. But throughout all the films, James Bond is a slick spy who has a license to kill. How many people are just allowed to say they could kill people? But his classy demeanor gets him involved in many short romantic relationships, which kind of exemplifies the masculine dream. According to, according to Chance Magazine, 20% of the world has seen at least one James Bond movie. I mean, it's pretty crazy to think how many people know the name James Bond without even seeing one of the movies. I mean, you probably heard of the reference whenever someone asks another person what their name is, and they're like, it's Bond, James Bond. But um, the franchise kind of tells a story of European history throughout 60 years with the message of espionage for the greater good. This rich character really connects people from all around the world. And now in the USA, where Americans have absolutely excelled in the art of filmmaking. 2001 A Space Odyssey was and still is one of the greatest movies ever created. It was so ahead of its time because it was made in 1968, a year before we landed on it. But it revolves around the ever-progressing evolution of humankind and the greater existence of life and technology beyond that. In the movie, humans have excelled at space expedition and colonization. It walks us through how maybe aliens have come in contact with humans throughout evolution, but also walks us through the dark side of innovative technology, hence the artificial intelligence going on in British Spring. It's probably one of the scariest ideas you'll see in any movie because it shows how computers can develop human-like personalities. Mind-blowing, right? I mean, it's pretty crazy to think about where our future leads, but 2001 Space Odyssey really humbles you in a way. Just think about how unimportant our differences are as humans, we should think about how we can really unite and come together for an effort which we all care about. Around. Also in the USA, we love superheroes. We especially love Marvel superheroes because who doesn't? I've actually sat down to rewatch all 23 Marvel movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, from Iron Man to Spider-Man Far From Home. It took me about 50, 50 hours to do so. Not kidding. But everybody loves the MCU for the beautiful plots, the human-like characteristics to the heroes, and the classic good versus evil conflicts. But these movies typically involve a very similar but unique pattern. Something bad happens to the good guy, the good guy gets up on all traits, the bad guy tries to take what the good guy has, 
and then the good guy defeats the bad guy. We see this over and over and over again, but they're still fantastic movies because each one has a different feel and a specific style to it. It's so cool how all 23 movies tie in with Avengers Endgame, in which everyone's favorite superhero came together to fight the villain. With a $2.8 billion worldwide gross, it snatches the, re the record for the highest grossing movie of all time. There's no doubt that the MCU plays a major role in American pop culture, but people from all over the world flock to these movies partially because of the diversity in them. They allow people of several ethnicities and several cultures to look up to a heroic figure in which they can see within themselves. It's also important for people to see certain diversity characteristics to simply understand how others are treated and perceived by the world. So overall, we as a society have a very specific responsibility moving forward. That responsibility is to allow each other to express our own ideas through art and creativity. We will eventually grow a strong understanding of each other this is where I also strongly believe that true peace and true tranquility in the world will only be achieved through an understanding. And movies are the perfect connection between that. Thank you.